Whitecap is a small but large for the Midwest ski resort with an elevation of 1,750 feet. It has a vertical drop of 400 feet, 400 skiable acres, which is a lot for the Midwest. And it gets on average of 200 inches a year, which is also a lot for the Midwest. And in today's video, we're gonna review it. It's a resort review. This is the video series where we go to a ski resort, we absolutely rip it, we shred it, we explore it, and then we come back here and we review it for you guys. So you guys should know, should you go to this ski resort at all? Should you travel? to a small Midwest one opposed to a big Colorado ski resort. That's what this whole video series is for. Now we do have some rules that we play by and this is just the way it is, so kinda gotta deal with it. So we're gonna rank each resort through 10 categories. Each category is gonna get a score from zero to 10. Zero is not applicable, meaning the resort doesn't have it at all. One is terrible, five is average, and 10 is best in the world. So after we get the score from the 10 categories, we're gonna give the resort an overall score out of 100, and it's a really good time. So now that we know the rules, let's jump into the first category, lift prices. How expensive is it to go to White Cap? And coming in at $60 for the day, it's a little up there for the Midwest. There's definitely cheaper places to go in the Midwest, but this place is large and they do offer a lot. So when I came to lift prices, I gave them a five because 60 is still very reasonable in today's day of $700 day lift ticket. So like uh, 60, we're cool with that. Now lodging, can you ski in, ski out at Whitecap? You totally can. They have this huge hotel at the bottom, which is also, I think, their lodge, which is pretty neat. And so I gave them a four for the lodging because it looks a little old, a little outdated. I did like use the restroom, things like that. And like, it might be time for an upgrade or a renovation. It looks like it's been there for a while, but overall, like you can ski and ski out, which is really rad. Now ease of access, how easy is it to get to Whitecap? If you were to fly into Duluth, you're gonna have a two and a half hour drive, which is pretty typical to get to any ski resort because they're kind of remote in their own places. So if you're traveling, to get there, that might be your best airport to fly into, or you can fly into Minneapolis. I believe it's like about a four hour drive from there. But it's pretty typical Midwest farmland, like easy driving. You're not gonna be driving over any insane mountain passes or anything like that. And so when it came to ease of access, I gave them a five for ease of access. Now, before we go to the next category, I do wanna mention, if you wanna see every single ski resort that I've been to or rated, you can go to resortskimaps.com. This is a resort map of every resort in the United States. All the green snowboards are the resorts that I have been to. You can click on them and watch the videos there, even see the resort reviews there and see if you want to go travel to that ski resort instead of a big expensive Colorado one or if you want to go to one of those Colorado ones those have also been covered. We also have where we're traveling for the upcoming seasons and a bunch of other incredible things on resortskimaps.com. I use it to plan all of my ski vacations so go check out resortskimaps.com it is linked in the description. Now lifts we got to get up the lift we got to ride the mountain and they have five lifts to get you up there which is pretty rad so when it came to chair lifts I gave them a three a lot of them were kind of older, like nothing special. They did have some four seaters, they had some two seaters. You're gonna get up the mountain. They did have one lift that had like a three trillion foot off the ground scariness that I was like, oh, we gotta ride that. And uh, they don't let anyone ride that section because it's so high off the ground. I really wanted to though, it would have been like terrifying. But uh, they get a three for lifts. They have them, you're gonna get up, but the lifts aren't gonna do anything special for you. But the runs, runs, how are their runs? We gotta get down. They have 43 of them. This was a pretty massive area, lots of places to ride. It Whatever, but none of the runs really stood out. They're pretty similar, kind of mellow majority blues for like Midwest calls them blacks. Like they're pretty mellow. And so when it came to runs, I gave them a four for the runs. Just like looking back at this day in this video, like nothing stood, like no run was like, we gotta do that run again. Like that was the run. But there's a lot of options out there for you. Now, terrain park, how sick was their park? They didn't have one, so they get a zero, not apple they don't have a part. Now, if you're enjoying this video or what I do on this channel, consider snagging an Evolution sticker. We do have a ski version for all the skiers out there. Snagging the merch, throwing it on the side of your head does support the dream. It also lets everyone know you are a part of Team Hawkhouse. And the best part is if you do snag any of the merch and tag me on my Instagram, I am following back one person a week that is snagging the merch and tag me. So go tag me on Instagram, snag some merch, supports the dream. Now food, we actually didn't end up eating there, but they have this incredible restaurant that looks like it has an incredible food. They have this awesome looking bar, which the bartender in itself makes it look like that vibe would be insane. So when it came to food, I did give them a seven. Once again, I didn't taste it, but for the most part, the photos and like the vibe of that looks insane. So definitely better than what you get at a typical ski resort. This is like, I don't know, like there's so much history in these like rooms. So uh, definitely kind of give me like a medieval vibe. So that's why I give them a seven.
Now views and scenery, how sick are the views? Uh, I barely can even remember them. It's the Midwest, it's kind of just like plain, like you are higher than other areas, but like nothing standing out. So I gave them a two for the views and scenery. Now employees, we do cover employees because employees can make or break your trip. You can have an employee that goes above and beyond and make sure that your ski rentals or whatever is like perfect for you. And so then you just have the best time ever. Or you can get a lazy crappy employee that gets you on skis that are way too big or a snowboard that doesn't fit your feet. And then you just have a worse time because an employee just didn't do a good job. And so that's why we cover employees. I also had a killer horrible incident at Keystone with some employees that could have ruined someone's vacation completely. You can check out that video right there if you want to check that out. So that's why we cover employees. And when it came to white Cap, how sick were the employees? Well, we got free tickets to go ride there. All the employees that helped us were super insane, super awesome. But we did hike something in the parking lot and drop it and it was super sick. And as we did it, like a couple of employees were by and they're like, that's so sick. And they're like hooting us on and not like yelling at us for doing something we weren't supposed to do. So that was really cool. So when it came to employees, I gave them a six on employees. They're, they were awesome people. Now the last category, the would I go back factor, because if I wouldn't go back to a ski resort, why would I recommend it to you guys? And on a score of 10, I gave them a three on the would I go back. We didn't have a bad day. We didn't have like the best day ever. I mean, we had a great Midwest day because we had a powder day there, which obviously any powder day in the Midwest West, like anything over four inches like what that's insane so we had the best possible day I think you could have there and like it still didn't like blow our minds or anything like that so that's why I gave him a three on the would I go back not a bad resort and the fact that it's got ski and ski out and like food on on the resort like that stuff's huge Now before I calculate all the scores and tell you what it got on the overall, make sure that you guys check out the other playlists, uh, the whole resort review playlist of all the other ski resorts that we've visited and seen. It's an incredible playlist and if you're trying to plan a vacation, it's one of the best ways to know like is this resort the right one for me and my family. And after I give you the score from 1 to 100, I will tell you who this resort is for as well. Alright, so Whitecap at a score from 0 to 100, what did they get? They got a <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> A 39, which is a pretty low score. I actually thought it would get a little bit higher of a score. It's an incredible resort. I think it's for people who uh, are learning to ski or snowboard. Maybe someone that's like a little on the intermediate wants to dip, dabble into the trees or like explore some of the drops and bumps that they have there. Not a park rider, there's no park for you, but you know, family, someone that like in the Midwest or someone out in Texas or Florida that doesn't want to spend a trillion dollars, this is a great place to come have a cheaper weekend or week long vacation. It's huge. So you're going to have a lot of variety be able to a bunch of different runs. So with all that being said, Tim Wild Hub Cows, thank you so much for shredding with me today. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep evolving. We'll see you guys tomorrow in another video. It's daily on this channel. We do stuff like this.